Today here we have Brother Christ. I hope you are well. I am, thank you. Uh, Brother, welcome to Christ Gospel. So I would like to ask you a question. What is the difference between grace and law? Well, we'll start with the law. From the, from the book of Exodus, um, you know, we know that God had given His law, the Ten Commandments. And, uh, and we know that there were other laws that were implemented uh, from the book of Leviticus. We, we have, uh, you know, ceremonial laws, we have uh, civil laws, and we also have moral laws that were also implemented. But the, the Ten Commandments specifically was given to prove to, uh, that man uh, was a sinner and that uh, he could not live up to the standards that God had required. But God tested man. He tested man from, from the time he gave him the law there in, in Exodus 20. He tested the man um, and all man could do was prove that he was a failure, that he could not live up to what the law required. And so as a result of that, there's the consequences that uh, if man failed in one part, he's going to be guilty of all. And, uh, and so therefore man is condemned. And, and also that we learn from the law that the law could not produce life. The law could not give life. But we know that the law pronounces death um, as a result of breaking the law. And uh, so what we have to uh, see now, what God has done is intervening, that he looked down from heaven and he saw that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God in Psalm uh, 51. And, um, and that there's none righteous, there is none that seeketh after God. And that may have been in 53, I stand to be corrected, but the quote is from there. So what is God's solution? Well, God is going to provide a way for man. And uh, because he desires that none perish, but all come to, uh, come to repentance. And um, uh, repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what God has done, he sent his son into the world. Which was spoken of in the very beginning that he would come. Uh, we see in Genesis, uh, as a result of the fall of man, disobeying God, Satan involved at that time, that the seed of the woman would uh, come and bruise the head of the serpent. So we see a picture here of our Lord that's coming through a, a, a young lady, which was a virgin, which is a Virgin Mary, and, uh, and that he is going to, to bring into this, uh, into this life what is needed as a result of him living here for those 33 and a half years or so. So we have from John chapter 1, I'm going to read, that for the law was given by Moses, which we know is the Ten Commandments, and then but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So now we have something introduced here in this portion of Scripture. It's grace, grace and truth. But we're going to talk about grace. Uh, grace has always been here, but what does grace mean? It means unmerited favor. But uh, God showed grace to Adam. He's shown grace to many down through the years. He's exhibited his grace. Uh, he's not always just brought judgment immediately, but yet he has displayed judgment as a result of breaking the law. But grace is unmerited favor that God shows. And we see this displayed through the person and work of Christ. And, <clears throat> and we have come into the benefit of this, those of us who have had faith in Christ. So I'm gonna read from Romans a, a verse if I may, and, and, I, and, I, and what we have to do is when we read these verses, we need to leave them alone, let them speak for themselves, and let's don't try and add to or take away, but we need to interpret all the scripture in regards to grace and law into a context that is fitting. It says in verse 20 uh, of Romans chapter 3, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. It says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So what comes through the law? The knowledge of sin. It's very clear. And then he says, but now the righteousness of God without the law has been manifested. 
it says, be witnessed by the law and the prophets. So we know this being the Lord Jesus. We know who it is and who he's talking about uh, as the Lord Jesus has come into this world. And verse 22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. It explains it here now. Unto all and upon all, it says, uh, of them that believe. For there is no difference. So when it says there is no difference here, there is a contrast between being talked about the Jew and the Gentile. And, and in this portion here, there is no difference. And as we go back in the first part of chapter 3, it says, for all have sinned. That means Jew, Gentile. All have come short of the glory of God. They've missed the mark. Everyone has missed the mark. And um, so whether you're Jew or Gentile, whether you had the oracles of God, you didn't have the oracles of God. God has declared all have sinned. And so that proves in our minds here that there is none that can be justified on the principle of law, on the principle of works. And that's what law really speaks of is us working, us doing, us trying to please God, us trying to be righteous enough to be acceptable to God. But God has said and made it clear that we're not. And that the... That the Lord Jesus had to come into this world in order for man to be justified. And then he says right here, um, as I said in 23, for all sin to come short of the glory of God. And look at verse uh, 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in who? In the law? No, in Christ Jesus. It's not through the law, but it's in Christ Jesus that one has been justified has been declared righteous. No one can be declared righteous based upon works and deeds because man can never produce the works that are, are, are adequate enough to be accepted by God. And so here it's very clear that it's stated, and then whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are uh, past through the forbearance of God. So there's the patience of God, long-suffering of God. So God has what? He's waited and he's waited. Why? Because he's going to send his son. Before the foundation of the world, he was coming. And it had to be this way in order for man to be justified. Um, and then it goes on and... and um, in verse 27, I would like to... Uh, well, verse 26... To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that uh, he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? No, not by works, but by the law of faith. So, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And that's very clear. And, um, and we don't need to take away from that. We need to interpret all the scripture in light of that, that no one is justified on the principle of keeping the law, but on the principle of faith. And uh, I want to go to Galatians, and I want to read a couple of verses here too. Um, We have a contrast, just to, to paraphrase, um, between the um, Ishmael and Hagar and, and also Isaac and Sarah, Sarah and Isaac. Uh, one is of the bondwoman, and then the other is the freedwoman. And so that speaks there that we're not under bondage. We're not under the law. We're not under this bondage there that's of, of uh, Ishmael and of Hagar. But we're under promise. We're under uh, uh, that promise that was made then. And, and so therefore we're under the freed woman. So our standing is, is in the Lord. And um, this verse here is very clear. It says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. But even we have believed in Jesus Christ 
that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not of works, not of the works of the law. For the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. But if I build again the things which I have destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So for I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. And he says, I am crucified with Christ. Now listen, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, <clears throat> I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ, who died, is in vain. And so, no man can be justified by the works of the law. And even as we're saved and we're born again, the law is not a rule of life for us. It says right here, as Paul said, it's not I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And, and then we have in another portion of Scripture in Colossians, it says this, Christ who is our life. So it's not keeping of the law. It's Christ in us that by the Spirit of God is manifested in and through us that fulfills all the requirements of the law. That's in, in chapter 8, even of uh, Romans. So the law is being fulfilled. And, and in a sense, we're above the law. We're not, not better than anybody. But because we're in Christ, we have been blessed with everything. And there's nothing else lacking. God, our acceptance is, is in the Beloved. It's not on the principle of works. And I'll read one other portion that we had this uh, yesterday um, from Titus. And it says, The grace of God, uh, which carries with it the salvation that has appeared to all men. It's the grace of God. It wasn't the law that carried salvation. It wasn't the works of the law that justified us before God. It was the grace of God that has appeared, that teaches us to, as uh, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world with an object looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So grace brings along an object. And the object is the person of Christ. He is the one that we look at. The law would never draw our attention to the person of Christ. The law will only condemn us. The law, the law will only bring sorrow in our hearts because we can't live up to the standards. And so we've been accepted as in Ephesians chapter 2. By grace, through faith, are ye saved. And it's not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God. So no one, verse is very clear, says man can be justified on the principle of the law. Only on the principle of faith, which it is by grace through faith. Faith being the vehicle into glory. So the difference between grace and law is the law demands us to do something. Grace, it's already been done. And as a result of unmerited favor, in response to this grace that's been shown to us, then we work, then we serve, then we do to the glory of God. So that's what I have with grace. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Okay.